Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church in beautiful historic downtown Anniston, Alabama. Our worship continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right that we who cannot exist without you may by you, you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our lessons. <clears throat> our first reading is from the book of Genesis, the 37th chapter. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan, this is a story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of the children because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers <clears throat> went to pasture their father's flock near Seshem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Seshem? Come and I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now and see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Seshem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. 
They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to their father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with the sleeves that he wore, and took, they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gil Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What's, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. We will pray a portion of Psalm 105, alternating by the whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Serve the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his best. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham and his servant, O children of Jacob and his children. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. The second reading comes from the 10th chapter of Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on the name of the Lord uh, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him 
unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But it, immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came to Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, what? why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. How beautiful on the mountaintop 
are the feet of those who bring good news. You know, it's a long tradition in our faith. I mean, not just as Christians, but all the way back to, to our Jewish roots. To be called and, and sent out to go and, and share God's good news to people. So on this eve of our departure to go on our annual mission to Uganda, I think it's no coincidence that our readings today all have someone either being sent or being called to go. Now the most obvious one, of course, is, is Paul's lesson as he tries to explain the intricacies of this gift of faith we have in Christ. He's saying that Jesus has fulfilled the law, and while the law has its place, and how it did a really important work, that has now been fulfilled and completed. And Paul says, like, we don't need to follow all those exacting 613 commandments. What we just need to do is believe in our hearts and profess with our lips. And we'll be saved. See, he's, he's not reducing the faith so much as he is making it as simple and as inclusive as possible. He's saying that the floodgates of heaven have been opened in what Jesus has done in his life, death, and resurrection. And all we have to do is accept it. You know, to, to believe in our hearts and to profess with our lips. And it's not a magic formula that like is like a key. Like when you check into a hotel and you get those cheap little cards and you get to use it a couple times and you check out again. No, it's, it's the beginning of a new life. But it's open to everybody. And if you can't keep all those laws or even remember them, that's okay. Because you got the most important one, that God loves you, that God's forgiven you, and that you can go and do likewise. So it's a pretty amazing thing. Paul is really excited about this. And so that's, that's why sometimes we have a hard time understanding Paul. is because we've heard this message for over 2,000 years, and so it's become rote. But for Paul, and for those early Christians, and that early church, it's brand new. This idea that we have this gift, this is good news, that we can, we can share it, we can spread it. And so we're excited to do that. But how can they believe if they haven't heard? And how can they hear unless somebody proclaims? And how can somebody proclaim if they're not sent? Paul's uh, words there echo Jesus when he said, The fields are white for harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his fields. Paul is making an appeal to allow this message of hope and faith and love to get deep in our hearts and get excited and go out and do that. And for each community to be sending people out. Now, you don't need to be sent all the way to Uganda, halfway around the world. You can be sent to your neighbor across the street. And that makes, still makes a big difference. In fact, that can be sometimes a longer journey than the journey we're taking. Because we have to overcome some of our fears and obstacles. So it's always that challenge. You know, we, we feel, those on our mission team, we often feel like what Paul's saying. We feel like people that are being sent to take good news. But I, I want to give a little context of what we do in Uganda. Now, the, the kids at the Mustard Seed, and a lot of Ugandans are more Christian than we are. I mean, they really believe. There was a huge missionary push at the turn of the last century. About 44% of the population are Anglicans. And the other, another 44% are Roman Catholics. You got about 10% Muslim. So that remaining 2% are traditional religion or something like that, holding on to those traditions. And so when we go, and the, the kids that grew up in the baby's home, I mean, they were in a very uh, positive Christian environment, and they, 
they really got the message. Now, like a lot of children, they don't always write off accept the faith of their parents, but we know maybe 40, 45 of the, the kids that aren't kids anymore that have graduated and finished schooling and are working or doing something. And that faith, though they've had their trials, it's more real to them now than it's ever been. So it's like the, the name of the baby's home, the mustard seed, that little mustard seed had worked its way into their hearts and it has helped them through their really challenging struggle. So I guess you could say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So if we're going to bring good news and they already know this message of salvation, what, what message do we have for them? And I think the message we have for those orphan children is that they are rescued, they're remembered, and they're not forgotten. Rescued, remembered, and not forgotten. To be encouraged, to be reminded that, I think on one hand you can think, well, God loves me and that helps, but our faith is a faith that's always putting on flesh and bone. It's an incarnate faith, and so it's always becoming real in our world. And so it's one thing to know that God loves you, it's another for God's people, somebody, to take that extra effort and to tell you that they love you too. And that's part of what we do. We'll look at Joseph in that first reading real quick because he's got a little bit of an orphan story going on there. His father Jacob calls him and says, now go see how your brothers are doing. Now Joseph had four wives, dysfunction very much. I mean, here's our founding family, who one of them, and you know, what the heck, got, we've got nothing on them, right? But he sends them out, and now you can kind of, they already don't like him because he's, he's a spoiled brat, basically. You can see him going out there looking for them. He can't even find where they are at first. He's got his manicured fingers and all that stuff. He doesn't do that whole shepherding thing. And when he does find them, you know, they're, they're so angry with him. They plan to kill him and then instead just throw him in a well. I mean, he is their brother, after all and sell him into slavery. You see, his, Joseph's trials, though, reshape him into the man that God wanted him to be. That this, this change, this, this trial he goes through, helps him grow into the man that God wants him to be. He's rescued, although it may not feel like it at the time, but he's rescued from this privileged life to a life where he gets to serve. He ends up rescuing his family, but half of the civilized world, according to the Bible. I mean, he does an amazing work, but he wouldn't do that if he stayed at home with his drink coat of many colors, would he? You know, when, when we go to Uganda, you would think, you know, you can just go across the street and work, but Sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone, our normal habitat. <laughs> Being sent halfway around the world can open us up to what God's doing. Doing something out of our normal can change how we see things and open us up. And it can heal us. Joseph is healed through the trial he goes through. You know, it's doing this Uganda mission stuff that began to open me up to the idea that maybe I could be a priest. Maybe I'm being called. Before I wasn't hearing that, or I wouldn't hear that, but that, that work opened me up. So, in the Gospel, which is this great story of God meeting us in the storms of our life. God meeting us in the storms of our life. But for me, I, I think the best part of that story in the Gospel today is the conversation of Peter and Joseph, uh, Jesus. So the waves are going and Jesus is walking on the water and they're terrified. And then Peter gets brave, faithful, pompous, I don't know, but Lord, if it's you, call me to come out. And Jesus' response is what I like. Like I could see him stop, 
stand there for a minute and go, come. Just real simple. Come. You don't need to make a big deal out of it, Peter. Just come. But you know, I think Jesus knows that we're afraid and we're fearful. The storms of life are real. I mean, they're dangerous. If you've not heard much or if you've been to the Holy Land, you know that the Sea of Galilee is a, can have some really intense storms. The wind coming off of those hills can blow hard and fast and you're just not prepared for them. So they can be they're real and dangerous. And Jesus knows that we're going to fail. He knows that we're going to mess up and we're going to fail from time to time. But the message is go ahead, step out of the boat. Go ahead and try something. Take a chance to do what God, or at least what you think, even, what God's calling you to do. Listen in the stillness of your heart, and you'll hear Jesus say, come. And he, he will remember you. When you start to sink, he'll be right there. He won't let you drown. So I love that line that Paul uses to wrap up that, that reading today. How beautiful on the mountaintop are the feet of those who bring good news. <clears throat> Everywhere, every place, anywhere we go, taking the good news that God's planted in our hearts and sharing it, whatever it may be. The people that we go to, that we help, you know, you've got to hope that they're blessed, but the one who goes, I think, more than anything, is the one that's blessed. I've heard countless stories of people that have done chaplaincy work or helped someone who's sick or done something and they were glad they did it but they think, you know, I think I'm the one that got more out of it than, than the people I helped. I, um, if you remember, we, we did a collection for a place called Crossroads Sober Living for Women. And it's a place for women to get recovery. It's also a safe place for them to get out of dangerous relationships. So we collected some basic, because a lot of times they flee and have nothing but the clothes on their back. So some basic supplies, some clothes. We ended up with, I don't know, it was a huge trash bag full of various things. And I delivered it yesterday. And they were so happy that we did that. Kind of that, when people open their eyes wide, like, wow, that's, that's cool. But as I drove off, I felt a deep peace. How God has not forgotten these women. How he has remembered them in their time of trial. You know, that God doesn't forget us. I mean, sometimes it feels like it. I mean, right? Sometimes we're like the psalmist, you know, Lord, where are you? You know, God save me. I've been waiting forever. How long do I have to wait? But... I'm sure that he is cleaning somebody's feet to make them beautiful, to send them out to bring good news to you, to bring good news to whomever. You know, uh, one of the slogans we have for our mission team from early on, and we have to say it the way our granddaughter said it when she was three years old, is we a team. I win this together. And it reminds me that we never go alone. You know, in the Christian church, you never do anything alone. You might feel like it when you're in here polishing grass and nobody decided to show up or whatever, but you're not alone. We, we, we do so much of what we do together. I want to thank you all for all that. that this has just been a huge outpouring of support for the, the mission trip that Kathy and I are, are stepping out on. I'm, I'm so thankful, both letting us take this time, financial gifts, and... Most of all, that prayer. I know you guys will be with us in prayer and spirit, and that makes a big difference. So, um, I want to do something. Probably be harder than I think. Uh oh. <laughs> right. I got to do it right here. Gina's going to help me in a minute. She doesn't know it. I'm going to teach y'all a song. I'm going to try to teach y'all a song. How beautiful on the mountain top are the feet of those who bring good news 
So it's like all those echo songs. So Gina's gonna help me echo. Steve will help you. Steve will help Gina, who's helping me, and then we'll all join in. How beautiful, How beautiful. on the mountain top. Yeah, the feet of those, the feet of those who, bring who bring good news. Good news. Man, y'all are good. Give yourself a hand. I guess that was amen. <laughs> Would you please stand and join me as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped, glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We look for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are form six on page three fifty that's not right. Three ninety two. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For Joe, for our president, for members of Congress, for the leaders of our state, for this community, especially our local mayors and city council members, for the nation and for the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, presiding bishop, Glenda, and Brian, our bishops, Wally, Kathy, and David, our clergy, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of Honduras and their bishop, Lloyd. Seminarians entering the first year of study. St. Mary's on the Highlands, Birmingham. St. Mary's Childersburg, St. Mary's Jasper. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of the Anglican Church of Chile.
for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Susan, Russ, Jim Wilson, Charlotte Grace, Anne, Anna Moore, Eric and Nanelle, Mrs. Jan Hayes, Danny Rice, Elaine Carroll, Miller Family, Grayson, Randy, Vanna, Jenny, prayers for Maui High Fire, victims and victims in Ukraine, and compassion and us for all the victims here and abroad. <clears throat> Wilkes, Chuck and Wendy Orson, Diane, Margaret and Zach, Catherine Eaps, Connie. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those who are celebrating birthdays this week, G. Locke Galbraith, Shveta Prosser, Perry Reynolds, Kelly Roberts, R. D. Holman, Lucy Watley, Cheryl Smith, Mark Clarkson, Faith Dorn, and Braley Tucker. We give thanks for the anniversaries of Marilyn and Ron Burson, August 12th, Dave and Janet Tyson Prosser. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share with one another a sound of God's love and peace. It's good to see everybody, and uh, I want to thank everybody for their continued faithful contributions to Grace to keep us running. It's been really, uh, it just makes uh, all the difference in the world, so I thank you so much for being so faithful in season and out. Reminder that we'll continue to meet on Wednesdays while I'm out of town, um, and so please join us Wednesdays at 5.30 for a time of uh, informal worship, singing, uh, something else. Oh, join us for cookies and lemonade after, and uh, see the last announcement that we're going to have a rally day on September 10th, and that'll be just one service at 10 o'clock, and then we'll have lunch in Tyler Hall, and then we'll learn about the, the vision work that Uvestry's been doing all year. If you remember last year at the uh, annual meeting, we got into roundtable discussions, and what do we need? What's important to you? What direction do you think Grace might go? We wanted to let you know we heard you. Or we're working on that and we're getting somewhere, I think, God willing. And so we'd like to go over that and talk to you about that. So looking forward to that. And Deacon David.
The daughters of the king come forward and also Kathy. Uh, yeah, just so you know, uh, Rob Morpeth from the diocese will be here to celebrate. Uh, and if any pastoral emergencies come up, Deacon David is always on call. Call him anytime. <laughs> For anything. My number is unpublished, by the way. <laughs> This is a happy occasion, by the way. We're sending them off, but we hope they come back in good form, healthy, good spirits. That's our point. It was in the green season of uh, Jesus' teaching that he gave these, this information to his disciples. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Whether that's across the street that we take that mission, or on the far, far side of the world. Those words ring true. One of our responsibilities as a member of the Daughters of the King, and one of our favorite responsibilities, is to support our clergy. And we would like to do that this morning by sending them out and with a blessing and a prayer. Uh, and we would like you to join us Yellow insert in your bulletin, and uh, please join us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, we commend to your fatherly care all whom you have called to take part in missionary work in the church. We pray especially for Father Wally and Reverend Kathy that you will watch over them, defend them from all dangers of soul and body, give your angels charge concerning them, and let your Holy Spirit rule in their hearts. Prosper all their work at the Mustard Seed Baby's Home to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Safe travels. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice for the whole world.
be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us, delivered us out of evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, in the words our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
the people of God. Take them to the remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Post communion prayers on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the God who sends you out also bring you home safely in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to have two birthdays in here.
Sound ready to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
But uh, but it's 